So I know if, if any quarterback put any kind of air on the ball, and at that time I think Peyton was one of the best passers, and I was I did it at practice with Peyton my my, my freshman year. So oh yeah, I I felt very confident in the game um, if I had that opportunity. Uh, so I knew if they put any air on the ball, uh, regardless where it was at, and I had the opportunity to be, be roaming back there, that I have opportunity to get it. See, as as guys watching this in the stands, man, I'm telling you, when this went down, like we were, we were up there saying, man, please throw it. Please throw it. Because yeah. people behind the scenes don't know how athletic these guys are. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? You get these guys in hyper for basketball intramurals and stuff. When they put a team together, man, they're in there. Rolo would make them stop. <laughs> like but seriously, the, Dion was down. literally Dion was the only safety in America that could have made Man, that play. It was different. I it mean, different. I understand why he threw that football. Yeah, it was different. Then we got it one hand, <laughs> <laughs> one hand. <laughs> that, that's the thing, Dion. Man, looking back at that man, um, that was a, a hell of a moment. Then you go on and you're able to get a Super Bowl. Talk about that game when you guys played the Patriots. You were with the Giants. What was that feeling like? Oh man, that was amazing. We we were just happy to get get there. We just knew if we got in the postseason, it wouldn't be no team to stop us. Um, right. And then and we knew we seen what was going on in the AFC, and we were just saying, you know, long all we have to do is get through the NFC because we end up seeing New England, and we already had them went to New England the last game of the season and beat them. So. We, we we had a lot of confidence going in that game. We was relaxed, and it was different for me, you know, for me because I experienced it when I was young mm-hmm. um, in Carolina when we lost to New England. Yep. But this time I was able to relax and just observe everything and just let the game come to me and let the weekend and all the festivities just come to me and focus more on the game. So I was able to really enjoy it more versus – it was, it was an amazing feeling. Um, you know, words really can't explain it. It's like you flown on air. That's exactly what it felt like, especially after, you know, when that clock hit zero and mm-hmm. you come out as um, victorious, you know. Um, it's an amazing feeling, like you flown on air. Deion Grant from Augusta, Georgia, University of Tennessee. Yeah. Played in the league forever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Won a Super Bowl, won a national title. Yeah. Um, and now he gets to go into Boomer Room? Is that what's happening? Yeah, we got to put him in there, man. Uh-oh. We got to put him in there. All right, D. Listen, man. <laughs> I got a thing. So we had Al on two weeks ago, Emo on last week. Now you on this week. So I got to put you in the Boom Boom Room. And the Boom Boom Room is when you go in, you got to answer all questions truthfully and honestly. And that's the only way you can get out of the Boom Boom Room. Do you agree to this? Let's go. I'm with it. <laughs> there, there it is. Hump, I take him in. One man on his way here to the boom, boom, room. All right, D. All right, here we go. First question. If you can think back to a moment outside of the catch that you had, the interception that you had, what was a moment that you look back on at the University of Tennessee and you, you say, man, if I could go back one more time and relive that moment, I would love to do that. Hmm, that's a good one. Oh, mm. man, outside of that game, it would have to be probably the national championship game. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I think it was a play where um, the quarterback threw the ball and I tipped it and Steve Johnson actually got um, caught the interception. I, I think yep. it has to be that game, um, <laughs> that moment. Yeah, big-time atmosphere, too. All right, who you, um, as far as rivalries go, Give me a rivalry that you would take to beat all day long. Alabama, Florida, or where you from, Georgia? Uh, when I was in school or now? Uh, either either one. It don't, it don't even matter. If it was when I was in school, it was it would definitely be. See, we dominated Georgia, and we and we Without beat question. Alabama. So it it would have to be Florida. You know, Florida got us two out of the three times. So I would definitely say Florida. Uh-huh. Dominated Georgia because yeah. y'all had all those Georgia guys. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, loved it too. we dominated Georgia. On that defense, D, who was the most athletic outside of yourself? Outside of myself? Outside of you. Because most definitely, to me, there ain't no question. You were the most athletic on that team. Outside of you, though, who was who was the most athletic? Let's see. 
Because y'all have this some might... y'all have Big Cat up there. Yeah, got Debo on the this, line. I, I about to say this might shock y'all. It would have to be at that time. It would have to be either Big Cat Sean Ellis. Mm-hmm. People don't understand Sean was a high recruit in basketball. He was yeah. one, another one of them guys. So it would have. I would have a top three. It would have to be um, Big Cat Sean Ellis, John Henderson. And Al Wilson. That'll be my yeah. top three. See, Sean Ellis went like 90 yards against Auburn, man. <laughs> Y'all were just running around him by the time he got to the end zone. <laughs> they don't know how to do the move, man. They don't know how to I do the I know all move. y'all were like, pitch it, pitch it. He's like, I ain't pitching nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we're a little short on time, D, so I'm going to give you this last question. We'll bring you back another time, man, so we can, we can get deep into it. But outside of the national championship game, give me a, a moment, whether you are a player or – a person watching in the stands or, you know what I mean, just a moment in school, whatever it may be, a moment in Tennessee history for you while you were in school that really stood out to you? Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. That's, 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 the, that's a great one. Uh, that's what the Boom Boom Room does. You know what I mean? We're supposed to stop. Oh, man, that's a, that, that's a great one. I'm, I'm going to go off on a limb, and mm-hmm. I know when I come back on, I might be I might change it, but I'm going to go off on the limb, and I'm going to say the Arkansas game because it was so much uh-huh. in that game um, the year we won the national championship. So I'm yep. going to say the Arkansas game. Um, you know, they had us beat. We went back and forth. Um, I was able to blocked the field goal that would have gave them a go-ahead win. And Al picked yep. it up and ran it and got us in good field position, and we ended up winning the game. So I have to say the Arkansas game. i never seen a guy with a neck roll move that fast yeah. with that football. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the great, and then, I, and then I love the hurry-up offense. Like when Billy yeah. Ratt d- gets the ball back, and the hurry-up offense is like four Travis Henry runs yeah. right up the middle. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't finish them up. <laughs> Dion Grant, you're released from the Boom Boom Room, man. Brought to you by Low T Center. I appreciate it, my brother. Man, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure being in the Boom Boom Room. <laughs> no doubt, baby. <laughs> hey, thanks, Dion. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all. Anytime y'all need me, just a phone call away. There man, you go. Man. Dion Grant, one of the best ever at the University of Tennessee. All right. We got a lot of big SEC games coming up. Yep. We're going to visit with Peter Burns from the SEC Network. Next, in the meantime, during the break, make sure you check out FightDMD.com. That is why we are here at Greystone in Dixon. 12th annual Golf for a Cure at Greystone Golf Club. Golfers out on the course right now. FightDMD.com is the website. That's where you can go get more information. That's where you can go help this great cause. We'll tell you about it all throughout today's show. But FightDMD.com is where you need to go. Jay Brown, Bud Dupree, and Caleb Farley. You hear them on the exclusive Titan Station. 104.5 The Zone. Dig it, surf, and landscape supply. That's where you need to go to make that lawn look as best as you possibly can. And Trey Hartzook is the guy with Dig it, surf, and landscape supply that can make that happen. Trey, what's up? How are you? Brent, what's going on, man? I'm doing great. Hey, shout out Greystone. Beautiful Dixon County, Tennessee. Home to me. Love that place. But, hey, let's get right to it. Dickens, Turf, and Landscapes Fly. Everybody asks, hey, what do I need to be doing right now? One answer. We need to get ready. Air fly, oversee that lawn. There's only one.
DMD, Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy, Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy, our friend Terry Marlin, uh, behind this great cause. FightDMD.com is the website. Terry will join us in a little while to tell you more about uh, the battle with Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy. His two boys, Jonah and Emery, um, have that, and uh, they are both here. They are awesome kids, and uh, we'll tell you more. As we roll through, we've got some SEC football to talk about, and the guy that we like to talk about SEC football with on Fridays is Peter Burns with the SEC Network. Peter, what's up? How are you? Um, it's kind of like in Caddyshack where they said that the hard stuff's not going to hit for a while. You know, I kind of feel like that's uh, what's going on. Did you? So you guys, I think I saw a picture earlier. Um, Ron, we need to work on the golf swing, buddy. Like we just need to, we need to get that dialed in. Is that yeah, Peter. Or what? <laughs> Peter, Peter. For those that don't know, and you pro- <laughs> maybe you do. I don't know. Peter's a very, very good golfer. Yeah. Go back and watch the swing and look how small his clubs are. <laughs> <laughs> like how short they are. That's all right. See, yeah, I thought, I thought, Peter, he, was playing, I thought he was playing with kids' clothes. But, it's you know, we'll get there. You're a natural yeah. athlete. You, you can teach anybody that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, Peter, man. I picked it up during the pandemic, man. So those are the loner clubs. But I'm on the way. It's getting serious now, so I'm going to buy me some. <laughs> I'm on the way. Uh, I love it. I love it, man. I'm fired. Hey, I'm, I'm so, fired up. I'm trying to figure out, you know, we were talking about it on the show this morning about, what, you know, what we're going to get in some of these games and like am, am i the only person that thinks I and mean, maybe you guys are this way too i'm much more intrigued by this auburn penn state game than i am alabama yes. and florida is that is that wrong to say because i feel like yeah i look i think i think alabama runs florida personally but anthony if anthony richardson gets live during that game and i know he's dealing with a hammy that that's the kind of athlete that may be able to keep them in it and, and may be able to send it the other way i don't know but but just looking at it, I mean, I bet Alabama. So uh, I, I like Crimson Tide in that one. I'm with you. Auburn, Penn State. I think it's going down to the wire. It's going to be an awesome environment. White out, night game, all that stuff. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that's one of those opportunities where you should look at what Penn State's coming in as a top ten team, and they're at home. Mm-hmm. It's like everything that they want it to be, right? Probably maybe the second best contender that they have going against what you know the SEC's what maybe sixth, seventh best team. I mean, I know they're ranked, but I'm not quite sure how <laughs> legit they are. So, you know, I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to it. And it, it's a rough go for the Big Ten if they end up losing that game. So, you know, I just don't – you know, and that was something that James Franklin talked about this week, guys. Is He's like, I don't know what to think of Auburn when I look at film. Like, they're like the greatest team in the history of the world, but how can I judge it when it's going up against, you know, Alabama State and Akron? So, I mean, you know, at least Penn State had that good win up, uh, up at Camp Randall against Wisconsin, but – I don't know so much that that was, you know, Penn State doing amazing things other than Wisconsin just shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, spot on. And I see, I, I think it's a big task for Auburn, but which Bo Nix is going to show up? That's the biggest thing for me. If he shows up, then we got a ball game because it's a big-time crowd. SEC is used to playing in big-time crowds, and so that shouldn't rattle them. But that is a hell of an environment they're going to walk into at Penn State, white out and everything else you want, like you said. I will say – um, your Kentucky boys, um, they just squeaked on by to me. You know, I, you know, I could. I've been waiting, but I've been waiting won. on this part. They won, but boy, we, oh, I wanted them to lose just so I could. I couldn't wait to get you on the line, Peter. Oh, uh, I, I knew. I was like sitting there going because you know they almost scored right before half, and I was going to make it like twenty-eight-seven. And I'm sitting there going, I don't even have Ron's number because nobody, like, you don't, you don't trust me with your number. And I was going to text you and be like, Hey, I told you. And then sure enough, like. Kentucky always plays football kind of like they have like a governor switch on a golf cart that doesn't allow you to go too fast. It's like every time things are going well, they either have not enough men on the field like against Florida or they'll have a bad fumble and they're kind of like snake bitten to that point. So yep. they got to win. You know, they'll look a little bit better coming going forward. Um, you know, I'm not concerned with them. You know, now I do want to see what the quarterback situation is for, for you guys, right? I right. Mean, you know, is it going to be Milton? Is it going to be Hooker? I mean, I think that's the one thing that, you know, I, I was disappointed that I was right in last week about Pittsburgh, you know, being just a little bit better than the Vols, and I want to see how mm-hmm. Heifel's going to get these boys to bounce back this week. Well, and that's the question, too, because they're headed to Florida. Usually Tennessee likes to give, like, the, the new quarterback his first start in Gainesville. That always goes well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I don't think that's good for the uh, the life expectancy. I was kind of like when – 
LSU had Ryan Paralu on the team, and they were great coming off a title. And he got kicked off the team, and all of a sudden they're like, all right, Jarrett Lee, you've never played football in the SEC. Good luck to you in Les Miles' offense. And obviously that didn't <laughs> work out too well. It set back the Tigers like a decade. So, I mean, that, and that's why it's so important, man. If you, if you get the right guy, a, a quarterback's going to change everything. You know, I mean, and, and that's what I feel like they have in Kentucky. I just don't think Heupel's got that guy quite yet. Yeah. I mean, Milton's got the arm strength, but just the amount of touch, and I don't know – if you can teach that touch over time because the game goes by so fast for these guys. I mean, when Milton throws the ball, I'm actually like watching and wondering if he's going to physically impale somebody with the pigskin. Like, I mean, he throws it that hard. Well, I mean, it was like, I remember being at A&M whenever Nick Fitzgerald was over there. Um, I think it was Fitz. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's Fitzgerald, but he was over mm-hmm. at, at there. And I was just like, that's just ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the way that he's throwing the ball, and they, they got to do something a little bit different. But I don't know, man. I, again, I think this is a, ends up being a, a big week. And, you know, I was talking to Doring about it earlier. We actually had Coach Spurrier on, on our show this morning. And Spurrier knows a lot, right? Like, he's, he's in the football office. And so I always try to ask him a question. I didn't want to ask him the obvious question, is Anthony Richardson going to play? But I said, hey, right. how do you think Dan Mullen's going to hire the or handle the quarterback situation this week? And he goes, well, I expect to see both in the first quarter. So that at least told me enough that I think yeah. Spurrier's in the know that Anthony Richardson is at least going to be healthy enough to play, which I didn't think was going to be the case after I saw him come up lame, guys. I mean, that, that looked like, oh, man, he was going to be shut down for a week or two. Easily. That, that, those soft tissue hamstring. Yeah, that's man. that's serious. Yeah. That's serious, especially for an athlete. Look, I'm not like me anymore, but yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> anyway, Peter, tell me this: Will South Carolina even get any points on the board going against this Georgia defense? Any point? <sighs> Field man, goal, in this position, man. You know, I love all of my <laughs> SEC teams equally, right? I mean, now now you're talking about which kid that I don't like the most, and I'm, I got to I mean, is does 10 feel like a victory? I mean, seriously, if they're looking at this Georgia defense, I mean, mm-hmm. I got to feel like if you get double digits against Georgia, which is no shame, it's, it's you know, Clemson would have taken double digits in a heartbeat. I just, right. I don't know if you see double digits from these guys. And, and I mean, that's kind of the big question mark is I don't know. I mean, there's like five different quarterbacks that could play in this game, right? We don't know if South Carolina is mm-hmm. going to go with Luke Doty or Zeb Nolan, the graduate assistant. And, hell, I don't know who's going to be QB1 for Georgia, right? Um, right. You know, Stetson Bennett's been banged up. JT Daniels wasn't ready to go last week. Do you see Carson Beck? Or, I mean, or does it even matter if the defense is that good? Yeah, you're right. Peter Burns with us from the SEC Network on 3HL. Arkansas pounded Texas, Peter, and then they troll him on, online. <laughs> Welcome to the conference. Beautiful thing. Um. I mean, there was no doubt, right? I mean, you just and, – and I joked around. I got a bunch of my Texas friends. You know, I spent 20 years there, and they are texting me a bunch of trash beforehand. And they're like, man, that was embarrassing afterwards. And I said, honestly, that's the best thing that can happen to Sarkeesian in Texas, right? Because you got – you know, if you've gone in there and, and won that game with that type of roster, you kind of think, all right, well, you know what, we can play. I mean, that was, a, that was like one of those, like, just – hop in the cold tub and you're like whoa all right well we're not ready for this like our, our we better recruit a whole lot better in the trenches if we want to have any chance over the next couple of years so i guarantee you in two or three years from now when we're talking about texas they're going to look a whole hell of a lot different and it's going to be because sam pittman and the hog just absolutely just step, you know treated them like a redheaded stepchild <laughs> that's you're exactly right speaking of trolling Tulane going to Ole Miss. Oh my God! I mean, this is, is so it, great. Is it, is it? Is it? Can it be a bigger troll than what they're doing? The SEC champs are going to Ole Miss, no matter um, what year. I, I I saw that. I mean, again, the well, like it, it's kind of a self own though, isn't it? Right? Like, I mean, it's great that they got the three <laughs> yes, different yeah. decals from like right around the Great Depression. But I think the last laugh is the team that's in the SEC <laughs> making like a billion dollars a year uh, and not Tulane. Now, they, they can right. play. I mean, remember, they almost beat Oklahoma, um, uh, you know, in week yep. one. They, they are legit. But I don't know. I, I think it's kind of a self-owning of yourself because I remember I looked it up today that, you know, in Tulane in 1963 or 64, they said, well, you know, we're going to move out of the SEC. Like, we don't, you know, we want to play a more national schedule as an independent. 
that didn't quite work out well for them. And then they tried to rejoin the, the conference back in like 88, and the SEC was like, nah, fam, we're good. Like, that, that ship has sailed. Like, we, nobody needs to get back. I loved it. Yeah. yeah, we already gave your room away and everything. We're straight, man. It's like the SEC is the mob, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, once you're once you're out, ask Sawani about that, right? So you know, Sawani still has like wooden um, bleachers over there. They've never fiscally recovered from yeah. that move. <laughs> Sometimes, Peter, you guys, you just gotta hang on, man. You gotta hang on. If Clark Lee can hang on, he gets back to back victories for a team in Vanderbilt with Stafford coming into town. Am I now? I said last week, Clark Lee's gonna go up there and handle business. I believe in it. Now, with him being a hometown guy, should I pull back on that just a little bit? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, listen, you know, Clark Lee needs one of these wins, right? I mean, and we kind of joke around it, but look at where that program yeah. was at last year, right? Kind of, you know, I mean, you know, not left for dead, but it was just kind of like, all right, well, who in the world is going to rebuild this? And if you're asking maybe the most important thing is to donors in the Nashville area to pony up, right? So you have the right locker room, so you have the right mm-hmm. facilities, so you can recruit the right players. You need to have those type wins because, man, if you're sitting there 0-2, who's going to open up that pocketbook when you look at what Alabama does week in and week out and Georgia does week in and week out, right? Like, you're just going to say, well, if I'm going to donate money, I'm going right. to donate it to Tim Corbin's, you know, Vanderbilt baseball team or something else. Um, but, yeah, I mean, this is an important win. You're hoping that you're kind of catching, you know, Southern Cal – or you're catching Stanford, you know, a little bit after Southern Cal had, um, you know, they burst their bubble this week. So, I'd love nothing for that, and I love Ken Seals, man. I, I want to see him kind of develop because I thought he was kind of the bright spot of last year. There he is, Peter Burns. Every Friday at three twenty, we talk SEC football, presented by Peter Blue Delta Blue Jeans. Thank you, boys. I, my my kids are over here at like a Dave and Buster's type place, and I'm pretty sure during this interview, it's cost me three hundred seventy five dollars <laughs> of tokens. So I'm I'm gonna need Ron's paycheck here. <laughs> Uh, 3HL to kind of make, make up for the last 15 minutes. Well, just go go use those tokens on like a stuffed unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you it. Later, boys. Peter. See you, right. Peter Burns. There he is at the SEC Network. When we come back, uh, we'll visit with Mark Mariani. He'll, we'll talk about the oh, Titans-Seahawks yeah. game with Mark, former All-Pro with the Titans, and get his blood in the water pick. He's 2-1 and one now. Took one on the chin with the Tennessee Vols. We'll see which direction he goes next. 3HL 1045 The Zone. Jay Martin and Ramon are not afraid to put themselves out there with a bold prediction. I've been fighting saying this out loud. Who would say? I'm picking the Titans to win the Super Bowl. Monday, starting at 6 on 1045 The Zone. Seven seconds. Buddy Alley Carpet One, they are your flooring experts. And if you're thinking about that next new flooring project, These are the guys that you need to call. They are locally owned and operated by the Allen family for more than 55 years. Zach, Jenna, and Judson Allen are in the store every day. You can check them out. The showroom is in Donaldson. Beautiful. 2405 Lebanon Pike. They have all of their products laid out for you there. And uh, they're going to handle every bit of your process, including the installation. They're not going to turn you over to a 1-800 number. They will help you there. 615-883-3289. BuddyAllenCarpet1.com. Your supersized automotive dealer. Hi, I wanted to get some info about a car on your website.
passionate and they just do amazing things and what a terrible disease. So just want to make sure we echo that a thousand more times. I love it, man. Um, thanks for that. And yeah, we crushed the golf course is one thing we did. How'd you guys hit them today, man? I'm we, we left our mark, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. me and Slay. <laughs> we're, we're, divots, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, life is short. You got to leave your mark, right? <laughs> this golf course knew that we played it. <laughs> oh my gosh. They got to warn you. They, they, the course, uh, manager has to be warned that you guys are coming out there digging <laughs> trenches man i know you're hey, getting oh hey, wait Mark, that's myself never mind we'll get to your blood in the water pick uh, at the end of your segment so people need to stay tuned for that two and one stay on the tuned season. because they're giving away free money and let me tell yes. you where it's at two and one on the season you took an l last weekend uh i think a lot of us did with, with tennessee losing to pittsburgh 41 34 as a former wide receiver what do you think those guys are going through running free in the secondary and a quarterback that's overthrowing them by like a hundred yards? Oh my God. I was on here last week talking about how my boy Joe Milton was going to hit some of these. We were texting <laughs> during the game us three about how we're going to hit one. It's going to be the game. It's going to be the game changing play. And we just didn't hit one, man. I'm just going, what is the deal? And it's one of the hardest things to practice. And we used to, we used to do it at the end of practice, almost like conditioning uh back in the day at uh with the titans because you know you're running sprints man and you got to run them full speed and the quarterback needs to see these at full speed but i mean just our boy milton just could not find his touch again and i you know i thought tennessee played great i was really stoked about the blood in the water pick in the first half um but yeah just not enough to get it done and and it was it was a bummer, man, but I think they showed signs. I don't know what they're going to do with the quarterback situation this week, but you got to hit those. you got to start hitting them. You, these receivers are too athletic. Well, you know, flip side of the coin, we can't be dropping them when they're in our bread basket either. But you got to hit that wide open receiver. You don't get too many chances at, at the high level of football, and uh, you got to hit them. got to hit them. So, you know, what's interesting about that is they say that he does hit those shots in practice. So, how is that? Is that weird? That, that it doesn't translate from practice to the game? You know, man, I don't, I don't think it's weird. I think, you know, you need some time under tension, more snaps, the better. But, you know, listen, you can't be losing football games when you're figuring this stuff out. At some point, Hypo and the, you know, the offensive staff have to, you know, how many chances do you get? Offensive coordinator draws up these plays, gets the matchup he wants, you know, whatever it takes, you know, changing the formation or giving, getting some motion to get guys at the right matchup. And when you drop these winners, man, these home runs, you just got to make them pay. So I think it's coachable. I think you can teach it a little bit. Maybe he has the yips like me on the, like me on the driving, uh, on the tee box, but it's just something that you just can't go into SEC play messing around with. So if he, it, it, you know, if he shows too many more of these, um, it'll, it's going to be continue to be detrimental to the team. And when you're in a one-score game or when you're in a tight SEC battle or when there's, you can't make these mistakes, you know, it's something that has to be corrected very, very quickly if they're going to keep throwing them out there. Man, Mark, speaking of corrections, um, the Titans got to do some correcting. They got to do some correcting going up to Seattle, man. What, you, what, what was your takeaway from that game? Dude, I started <laughs> that game. I was at Nissan Stadium. Had a couple of brewskis in the system. I was ready to rock and roll. <laughs> and two and a half, three hours later, I'm walking out of the stadium with my head between my, le- you know, head hanging, <laughs> speechless, man. I, I don't know what to say except for I hope it was a strong wake-up call um, for all 53 involved and coaching staff and everybody. I hope it was not a sign of things to come. I mean, I know we had some rust to shake off. I know there was some timing issues. I know that there's excuses everywhere, but the problem is, is the Arizona Cardinals are ready to play, and the Seattle Seahawks are going to be ready to play. So, um, you know, there wasn't one unit that was that you know that was perfect, and there was a lot of stuff that can be corrected. But you know, I was most disappointed with 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 sort of the effort and the the intangible stuff. You know, just the the quitting on plays and kind of the the uh, the penalties and, you know, a couple of turnovers, just like, I don't know with all the ups, with all the off season talk, with all the hype, with all the expectation that was coming into this season and to go do that, to put out that kind of a performance uh, was very, very disappointing. And the only thing I can say is this, <clears throat> if you go down and you lose on a last second field goal, maybe you're saying, okay, we played well enough to win and we, you know, made enough plays to be close in this game. 
mm-hmm. and, and you kind of sweep a couple of these things under the rug, well, guess what? When you get your butt kicked at home on week one, when each phase has, has uh, you know, things that are terrible and need to correct, maybe you look at it differently and go, guess what? We better sit in this chair and get better immediately or else we're going to be in trouble. Man, Mark, you know what, though? Outside of that, outside of what the Vols did, outside of what the Titans did, I'm in the water. I'm trying to figure out, do you smell <laughs> Are you ready to hunt, Slay? I'm, oh, 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 I got my hunting shoes on, baby. Hey, <laughs> listen, <clears throat> here's the deal. Here's what we got going. Okay, talk to me. The easy homer pick is our boys up in Seattle. But mm-hmm. like we just talked about, they have some work to do, right? We, the, those guys are – those guys have something to prove to us. But yes. I'm going through. I'm looking at it all week. And if you, want a, you, if you want some overreaction, here's some overreaction. They're giving out free money in L.A. this week because Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys are getting three points going into L.A. And guess what? We don't want those points, baby. <laughs> we don't want those points. No Gallup, no Michael Gallup, no Randy Gregory, no De- De- Demarcus Lawrence. Guess what? We don't care. We're not going to stop Justin Herbert anyway. We're just going to outscore him, baby. Oh. Dude, Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott, and the boys. I tell you what, after what I saw with Dak Prescott, Brett, <clears throat> Dak Prescott with the Tampa Bay Bucks game on Thursday night, he's one of the top three quarterbacks in this league. It's going to be the 40 to 39 shootout, baby. Let's go. Oh. Plus 142, Slay? Yes. You like that money? Oh, They're I giving it out. It. Let's go. I got to go get it. We're going to get it. <laughs> there he is, Mark Mariani. We're going hunting, baby. Oh, I'll tell you what, I, I tweeted right after the game, Dak Prescott is a top five quarterback in this league. Is it an overreaction? Maybe so. Before that ankle injury, you know, he was playing at that level. He's got a lot, long way to go. But what that offense showed me when they're healthy, dude, they're mm-hmm. stoppable. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we, lost, we last saw them on the field shutting down the Kansas City Chiefs, and then they go out and score, you know, four touchdowns and, and have to get, have a game-winning field goal to beat the Cowboys. There's been a lot of stuff going on with that locker room this week, but they're giving out a plus 142, and I'm taking every cent of it. There he is, Mark Mariani. At Mark Mariani, 80. I want some. Sold by Mariani.com. Thank you, Mark. Go get it. Go get it. I'm have going. a great weekend, fellas. <laughs> Thank you. Bud in the water is Dallas at the Rams. 40 to 39. Even the gave, oh, it's sorry. The mm. Chargers. Yeah. Even gave the score. Sure did. 40, 40 to 39. 39. All right. Uh, well, we come back uh, again. Broadcast live at Dixon, the 12th annual golf for a cure at Greystone Golf Club. Do what Mark Mariani suggested. Go to fightdmd.com to learn more about this amazing organization. What Terry Moreland is getting done. They've raised more than a million and a half dollars in, in about a, in 12 years. Mm-hmm. Thanks to a lot of you guys. So if you can donate dollar, five dollars, thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, whatever you can do. Uh, it helps um, in terms of research for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. There is no cure. We need to get a cure. FightDMD.com. Jason Swain coming up next on 104.5 The Zone. Your Titans head to the Pacific Northwest where Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks await. Let's see what we're going to get. Coverage starts Sunday at noon and then kickoff at 325 on your home for Titans football. 104.5 The Zone. What up, people? Talk to me. I'm talking to you. You got to listen. That's what I need you to do. What are you listening about? That's what you wonder. That's Red Dog Wine and Spirits. That's what you're listening for. They've been a Franklin, Tennessee favorite for over 20 years and experts in all things beer, wine, and cocktails. Red Dog Wine and Spirits can help you select that perfect bottle of wine for dinner or pick out that seasonal craft beer or other beers for that game that's coming up this weekend for the Vols and the Titans. You need to scurry on in there. That's right. I said scurry. Like a little puppet dog. Get on in there and go in there and get you something to drink. Get you other things, too. They got all sorts of things. And if you don't know exactly what you're going to get, they got 20 years of expertise right in there that can help you get it. They want you to try before you buy also. You can try. Their tasting bar is open for you each Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Red Dogs Wine and Spirits. Riverside Drive in Franklin, Tennessee, next to Publix off Highway 96, or online anytime at reddogwineandspirits.com. When you go in, let them know. I'm in the building. Red Dog got you. This is Mark Malusis with a CBS Sports Minute. Sp-
Hawks. Kickoff is Sunday afternoon at 325 on your home for Titans football. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Good afternoon. I am Joe Hunk. And just a little while ago, the Titans announced that rookie cornerback Caleb Farley will not be making the trip to Seattle. He has officially been ruled as out. But good news football-wise is all for Austin P fans. Austin P has announced that after 59 years as a member of the Ohio Valley Conference, they are leaving the conference next July to join the A-Sun. And Friday means uniform combination announcements. Vanderbilt's going to be going with their classic black and gold uniforms with the new helmet design that they're going to be rocking against Stanford tomorrow night. Tennessee going to be going traditional. And the Titans, as we found out earlier this week, will be going stormtroopers with all whites. For all your foundation repair waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station of the Tennessee Titans and home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. The 3HL with Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. Hotel, 104.5, this home, Brent Doherty, Ron Slay. What's up, Ron? What are Man. you doing? Man, I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Look That's at what you. I'm doing. That's you're, exactly what I'm doing. You're on the golf course. I am. I had a great time on the golf course. Yes, we uh, finished 11 under here at the Fight DMD Golf Work, your 12th annual. Yeah. And we had 11 birdies. Yes. You had five of them. Yes, I'm proud of myself. Designated today. putter, DP. Yep, did a, did a good job, man. Our friend Terry Marlin and uh, his group, FightDMD.com, that is the website. Get more information about what they're doing with the shin muscular dystrophy there. Nonprofit organization founded by Terry Marlin in 2009 after both of his boys, Jonah and Emery, were diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duchenne muscular dystrophy, 100% fatal disease with no current cure. It's crippling by the age of 11 and fatal by their mid-20s. Uh, mid to late 20s, the disease affects one in 3,500 boys born each year with no ethnic or geographical boundaries. FightDMD.com, help these guys out. We have to find a cure. Mm-hmm. Got we have you. to. No way around it. Nope. Um, Tennessee hosting Tennessee Tech coming up this weekend, and Vol for Life, Jason Swain, set to join us. Hey, Swain event. He is the CEO. President, CEO, ambassador, um, consigliere. <laughs> what else is he? Is he consigliere. <laughs> VFL. Yeah, um, definitely VFL. Yeah. Uh, SwainEvent.com, the website, at SwainEvent. Jason, what's up, man? How are you? What's up? I'm great. I'm also the janitor, too. Yeah, well, you know. You got a lot of titles over this one. Uh-huh. A lot of responsibility. It's hard being, you know, a media mogul in Knoxville. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. And last time I checked, man, the biggest cities in the United States, you got your moguls. Well, I mean, that ain't us. They ain't got nothing to do with us. But speaking of titles, <laughs> who will don the title of quarterback for the University of Tennessee? QB1. Who's going to be QB1? Yeah. I mean – my personal opinion, I think Hendon Hooker has earned that response, earned the right to be the guy based mm-hmm. on what he did, um, you know, in the last game. Um, you know, it all points goes back to, to what the guys are doing in practice and how you're proving yourself to your teammates and coaches. I mean, it's about creating those habits. And if you, you know, if you're not getting it done in practice, then uh, that's going to determine a lot of the playing time and who should get the start. Um, you know, Ron, you know, man, if you, if you ain't missing, if you're not making any shots in practice on the on the court, why should we give you the green light to shoot it in the game? That makes no yep. sense, right? So, based on what we saw in the, against Pittsburgh, the offense did a really good job moving uh, when Hendon was in there. The problem is, you know, he had two turnovers and, and 30 snaps, and that's something that scares the crap out of you um, if you are Josh Heupel. you got to make sure that you not only put Hendon in really good situations, but uh, he has to do a good job, uh, Hendon, of uh, taking care of the football. And that's why I think he was number two heading into the season. I think – uh, if you are Tennessee, you try to play both quarterbacks in this football game. It's the perfect time to do that. Help, help Joe Milton and these wide receivers get on the same page. Because I think later on in SEC play, you're going to need Joe Milton uh, because physically he just does things that not a lot of people can do. But Joe has to play better. There's no doubt about it. So uh, I think you play both. And I don't think it matters who you start. Uh, but if I 
was making the decision just based on the last game. I would go with Hendon first and then uh, play Joe as well. Do you think a third quarterback gets some run in this one? I mean, if the score is lopsided and you beat team, beat you know Tennessee Tech like you're supposed to, um, but we just don't we just don't ever see a third quarterback um, mm-hmm. in situation. I don't remember the last. You know, I saw a third quarterback play uh, unless it's you know seventy to nothing or something like that. Um, you know, just you just never see it that much. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Do you think Cedric Tillman has reached a point where like he's frust- like like what do you think his frustration level is? Because that dude could be, like be leading the SEC in receiving yardage right now. Man. I don't. I don't. I don't think his frustration frustration level is high at the moment. I mean, I think in the heat of the game. Certainly, for sure, when you're wide open and, you know, the quarterback fails to hit you. But I think after that, Tillman is a mature enough wide receiver to understand, like, instead of, you know, walking around frustrated and, you know, it's best just to sit down with your your quarterback, have those conversations, make sure you watch them together so that way he sees what you see and vice versa. Uh, and then go back to the practice field and work on that timing. Uh, Joe Man. has to understand, or any of the quarterbacks have to understand, there's a distinct difference between throwing and failing high who is a low 4-3 guy, throwing to uh, Devontae Payton, who is a low 4-4 guy, and then throwing to Cedric Tillman, who is, you know, 4-7 guy. So you got to understand your, your personnel. Uh, Tillman is a guy, you know, you want to put the ball more on. Uh, he is great in jump ball situations, so you don't have to lead him as much. You throw it a little bit short, but you make sure it's high uh, to give him a chance to, to make plays. So, you know, these guys, they have not spent a ton of time together because Milton just got here a few months ago. Uh, Hendon, you know, a couple months before him. Um, you know, you want to continue to build that time. And, then, you know, deep passes take it. It's it's hard, guys. I mean, it's a low percentage throw. It takes time. Uh, but there's no doubt that these guys have to get better at that if Tennessee wants to win some games down the future because this offense is not built for 15-play drives. This offense needs quick strikes, big-time plays, uh, because you know they're going to go fast and put stress on the, de- stress on the defense. So they got to hit those big plays. Man, you got Jimmy Callaway, who was a bright spot also, and, of course, the running game. But I, I, I want to look on the defensive uh, side of the ball, Swain. That middle, what are we going to do about the middle of the field on defense? It's like when when all else fails, man, just throw it to the middle of the field. Somebody's going to catch it and get you there. Yeah, I think I think it starts with the pass rush at the end of the day. I mean, you saw where Pickett was able to scan – both sides of the football field a couple times and then work back to the middle of the football field and find a void. If you don't have time to, to do that, then you can't get to the middle. I think the linebackers have to do a really good job um, of, of taking care of those zones. Um, you know, safety's got to do a really good job. But, yeah, the middle of the football field is certainly an area where Pittsburgh was, was hurting Tennessee in his previous game. So you go back to the, to the film, you see what you did wrong. But I think getting Byron Young back um, along with Tyler Barron should help with the pass rush so that way the quarterback doesn't have all that time to throw the football. You know, speaking of the defense, Jason Swain with us at Swain Event on Twitter. Give him a follow. SwainEvent.com is the website. Go there and learn more about what he's doing. Um, Talking about the defense, I do like how they are running to the football against the run, man. You're you're seeing a lot of energy. You're seeing a lot of effort trying to to rally and gather and go after those that run game. I thought they've done a, a, I mean, a, a shockingly good job in the first two weeks. I don't. I don't think uh, I would have said that the defense is ahead of the offense right now. I, mean, I was expecting for you know the offense to be out in front and you know hitting big plays and, and the defense to be kind of struggling along. Um, basically, the opposite. We've seen the defense play uh, play hard, play fast. Now the only thing they need to really, really work on that in the last two games have been glaring against them, and that is you know we haven't generated turnover. You know we are minus four in the turnover department right now. Uh, turnover margin, excuse me, and that's something as a team you don't want to be in. You want to be plus, and so defense got to continue to, you know, uh, rip at the football. But again, it starts with the pass rush. Most most interceptions are you know, a result of the pass rush. And Tennessee, quite frankly, just hasn't done enough in that position. So got to generate some turnovers on defense. All right, Tennessee and Tennessee Tech got to get it done on Saturday because it's Florida week next week. <laughs> that's right, guys. That's right. <laughs> hey, thank you, Twain. Have a great appreciate weekend, it, man. Appreciate you. Y'all, too. The two media moguls of Nashville. Have a good one. <laughs> Third one's in Memphis. At SwainEvent.com is the website. When we come back, Trash Talk Friday commences and.
We'll get into a little of this uh, Titan Seahawks uh, deal uh, next. Uh, that's coming up. Stay tuned. 3 HL if you want in. 615-737-1045. Blaine and Mickey never let up. You better go out there. Guns are blazing. If you are starting this league, and it doesn't matter who you go against, you better let them know that you're the real deal. You can't even crack that window, can you? You no. got to keep that window nailed shut all the time. Especially if you're an aging veteran. You know, in the NFL, you know, you get 30 all of a sudden now. You're a different player. I'm like, oh, well, can he still do it? They'll start questioning and doubting until you close the door and say, no, nah, this guy still got the goods. Blaine and Mickey, Monday from 1 to 3 on 104.5 The Zone. Wayne and Mickey, we saw those guys tonight. Love seeing them, um, and uh, we would love to see you check out Xfinity. You know when you have to make hard choices, like between chocolate, brownie, fudge, or lavender ice cream? That may be a tough uh, call for you. Well, where it really gets tough is choosing an internet and wireless carrier. Like, do you choose fast gig speed internet or one that blocks malware? And then what about wireless? Do you choose unlimited with 5G or the most reliable network nationwide or wireless that's number one in customer satisfaction well with xfinity you do not have to choose because you get all of that with xfinity it's internet and wireless so good it keeps one upping itself get xfinity internet and mobile together for 35 dollars a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement switch today requires paperless billing and auto pay ends october 11 2021 Restrictions apply. New performance starter internet customers only. Equipment taxes and fees are extra and subject to change. After the term, regular rates apply. Compares optimized pricing to top carriers. Xfinity internet is required. Hey, it's Ramon Foster. Guys, have you noticed a lack of energy, motivation, and drive? It could be low T or something else like sleep apnea or even low thyroid. You
tell you more about this amazing cause and the work that they are doing. And, and uh, man, can't thank you guys enough. Those that have chosen to give over the years, this is the 12th year for this event and 12th annual golf for a cure event at Greystone golf club. You guys have helped raise over a million and a half dollars so far. So um, they started with nothing needed 500 grand to get a research grant going. Mm-hmm. And uh, can't imagine how enormous of, of a target that looked uh, for Terry Marlin and his family, but they did it. Thanks to a lot of you guys. And so appreciate you. Small or big. Every, That's right. Everything. Everything, everything piles up. Man. You can give $5 or $100,000. Mm-hmm. 10 cents. Yeah. I mean, anything. Anything. So. All right. Uh, Trash Talk Friday uh, has begun. Uh, with a lot of opportunities for you to weigh in. And we'll, we'll just go to Gator Mike. He always loves to jump in on Trash Talk Friday. And he is on hold now. Better have some good ones today. Florida hosting Bama, 14 and a half point underdog for the Gators. Gator Mike, what do you think, man? Uh, well, first of all, a little birdie told me nobody is taking a bet on Florida. I'm a little disappointed, Clay. I figured you'd take Florida in the points. It's at home. Number one team coming in, Bryce Young. First hostile environment on the road. Our defense is going to step up. Brett, I am calling it. Florida is going to win 31-27. You write this down, Gator Mike. Gators money line, according Ooh. to Gator Mike. 14 and a half point underdog. He doesn't need the point. He don't want the point. He doesn't want the point. Give him the money well, I'm line. Telling, I'm, I'm saying a gambling man should take the points. Because here's the other thing, Brent. You know, <laughs> you know we, we always joke about Vegas with Todd, right? Mm-hmm. 90% of the money is on Vegas. You think Vegas is going to let Bama cover the points? No. Well, I, I tell you this, Gator Mike. I tell you this. If it would have got up to seventeen, I would have snatched them points with Florida. It, uh, well, I'm telling you, I like that hook though. The fourteen and a half. You know, you have that half on there. It makes mm-hmm. it big. So I'm definitely taking my team in the points. But I think Ben Mullen's going to have a plan for Florida. I mean, for Alabama, Nick Satan and all of them. He's going to have something dialed up to not put Emory Jones in a mistake situation that's going to cost us something. Anthony Richardson, thank God. Miles Stunt. Spray, he's been practicing all week. He's going to come in and show us what a great player he is. Me and Brent already talked about it. He's ridiculous. He's the Stunt. future of Florida football. And I think with that home crowd, the rain is going to help us because of our running game this year. I think we pull off the upset tomorrow. But if right, not, there. I'll have my better trash talk next week when the ball is coming down. So. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Either way, you'll be ready for that one. I tell you what, keep that I'll bottle ready, close. Brett. Keep that bottle close during that game. All right, Gator Mike, thank you, buddy. <laughs> my man. Man, we need to get on a text around with that guy next yeah, week. Yeah, it's gonna be live, boy. Can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine me? All yeah. week next week. I love it. Especially after the Titans win. Tony the stud next up on Trash Talk Friday on three HL. Stud, what's up? What is going on? Fellas, it's Trash Talk Friday. How you all doing? Oh, uh, we're great, doing man. Good. Man, uh, so first off, I just want to show down with a little bit of Trash Talk, and then I want to get in the Titans ball scene real quick. Uh, Joe, Joe Hunk, you got to do better on Madden, bro. Bro, you got to do better. <laughs> you can't be no. letting Seattle come up in your house on Twitch, bro, and demolishing you at the end, Joe. Joe, no, I know. come on, man. Look, I, Come on. I almost pulled a Taylor Lewan and put out a public apology. No, I, I, Joe. I, I no. almost did. <laughs> Don't you dare. You did the right thing, Joe. Hey, Hunk, you had Seattle fans in that feed too, right? I did. It was, it, was very, it was very split. There were Seattle fans and Titans fans in that. And when I actually – uh, through the the last pass that that meant I lost the game, there was even one Titans fans like, well, this is where I get up and go to the car. <laughs> well, hey, just, just to be honest with you, it's your fault that you didn't play a cover three in the fourth quarter because you know they were thrown deep and they hit you on an eighty yard out route and I, look, went for six. Look, my so t- my, my coaches, Tony, wait, wait, Tony, wait, 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 eighty yard out, out route. route. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, seventy. What was it? Seventy six <laughs> yards or something? They, it, you, they burned you on Tyler Lockett one on one coverage yeah. on the outside, and Russell Wilson just dumped it just right into his hands for a deep bomb to oh, go up at the very okay. end. Hunk, you've got to roll yeah, cover. I, I think there'll be more of the same that uh, this week with the Tennessee balls, y'all. Uh, I, I really hey, – look, I want to put this Joe Milton thing to rest, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how the rest of the balls fans feel, but, you know, watching Bowling Green and then watching Pitt, um, I saw a quarterback that didn't have the NCC to compete in the SEC. Uh, that's just my personal opinion on it. Um, 
he's had plenty of years uh, to, to get that accuracy under control. I don't care if you hit it in practice. In practice, it don't matter. Game days, it does. And it's the same thing with the Titans. I felt like this past week, and I tried. I think uh, I was going out to the country when I tried to call y'all earlier this week on Monday to talk about it, but the Titans did not look conditioned. That was my biggest thing. I felt like they were gassed from the get-go. I felt like they were breathing heavy the whole time. And when that momentum got picked up from, from Arizona and they ran with it, I swear I think Taylor Lewan. I, I really do think that he's – it worries me because I think that Taylor Lewan is going to need six to eight games just to get that energy back. He said he was a little bit excited. What an excuse. You're going to come with apology on Twitter publicly and then come back on a podcast and talk about you were a little too excited. You are a left tackle, one of the highest paid left tackles in the league. There is not a single Titans fan out here that wants to hear that story. You know what we want to see, Taylor? We want to see that same energy you bring into the Predator's house when you chug a beer. We want to see the same energy that you got that money and that contract for. Because I'll tell you this, you're, in my opinion, the best player on the line, and you need to tech, protect 1-7. I think Seattle goes and wins by two touchdowns this weekend, and we'll see if we can get back for Indianapolis. Love y'all. Woo! There he is. Sorry, this uh, two touchdowns. Yeah, that's a spanking. Here's the thing. None of y'all are going to want to hear this. But if they're 0-2, the season starts in week three. Right. With that Colts game. Look, yep. the Colts are home underdogs again. If they lose, that's two home losses. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. everything's still on the table either way, really. But the Titans just need to look better for right. sure. And they've got, to, they've got to be able to make Russell Wilson uncomfortable. And that's not easy. Mm-hmm. He's one of the best at what he does. But DK Metcalf at 6'4", 235. Yeah. Jack Rabbit's 5'10", 190. Christian Fulton, 5'11", 197. I don't know. Throw it over here, dog. But here's the thing. Christian Fulton, according to Pro Football Focus, against A.J. Green, four targets, one reception, four yards, two passes defense. If he plays well again this week, at what point do you start flipping those dudes to the – to the? now, they could be playing the side. I don't right. know yet. Um but uh, he he definitely, like, out of that debacle that happened last Sunday, one of the positives certainly was watching Christian Fulton react to passes. Yeah, and I think a lot of it was the execution. We heard Coach Mack talking early in the week. It was the, the scheme and everything was what we do as Titans. But outside of that, it was just the executing. Um, the, the biggest difference in this game is you had individual performance. Individual performances happening with Arizona. Like, it was a lot of great guys going to work. So, with that being said, this team you're going up against Seattle, they move great as a unit. So, it's not it's not depending on a guy like Buda Baker coming down making a great play or, or, or something of that nature or Chandler Jones going for five sacks. This whole unit gives up things, and they won't be trying to jump the gun and go inside. They'll stay right in their gaps, and you got to beat them, man. So, I look, I look, I look forward to Tennessee Titans really going out and executing. And I got the Titans, man. I got the Titans handling the business. I mean, Todd Furman said they're a live underdog. I love that. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I don't feel good about it because you're you're going against probably a better football team at home. That's the thing. They've won twelve consecutive home openers. I know that doesn't matter with regard to this matchup, but that is something. I, w- I w- and and that crowd notoriously oh loud, right? And they haven't been able to on mass attend a Seahawks home game in right. a long time. Right. So it's going to be live up in that joint. You've got to, you've got to deal with it early, put some points on the board, neutralize it, make it a four quarter yep. game and see what happens at the end. Yep. I, and, and me as a, I would much rather play against individual talent than a unit like that. Uh, a team that moves as a unit, man, that's dangerous at any time. Cause once they click, ain't no clicking off. So, I mean, you can you can subdue a guy like Chandler Jones. You couldn't do a Sunday, but most of the times you can subdue those guys and, you know, focus in and lock them out. But a whole unit moving, uh, hey, boy, that's different. So let's go, Titan. Tighten All right. up. All right. Tighten up. Oh, well, Don said we need to tighten up. Yeah, I, now Don need to tighten up. Yeah, she's in Memphis. Memphis, Mississippi she's ready. State. Yeah, she's ready. Let's take one more phone call, and then we're going to talk with uh, Terry Marlin about Fight DMD. Uh, dot com. Uh, RJ is in Phoenix, and I think he wants to talk some trash. RJ, what in the heck is going up, man? What's going on, man? First of all, y'all do a great job. 3HL is something I look forward to every day. Uh, but I want to talk some trash, man. I want to talk trash to the Titan fans that jumped off the wagon on week one, man. We're going to be okay. 
hold your water, keep your powder dry. Listen, <laughs> the Jaguars, Houston, and Indy is going to lose to the Cardinals and the Seahawks too, man. We need to win these divisional games. We need to get ourselves together. But my trash talk is to the implants. So basically, all the implants in Nashville, man, they ain't even really Titans fans, man. Y'all can get up off the bandwagon, man. <laughs> Super Bowl the bus, man. Tighten up. Let's go. There you go, RJ. Salute, man. Way to hold us down way out there in Arizona. I didn't know where he's going. I'm talking yeah. about implants. <laughs> That Titan conversation Titan took a turn, man. The Titan implants fans. Get them out of there. I love it, man. Uh, Titans and Seahawks coming up at 325 p.m. on Sunday. Remember, it's that late start time. 325 p.m. You can catch all the action on 104.5 The Zone. Broadcasting live today from Greystone Golf Course, fightdmd.com. Again, the website. Terry Marlin is the guy behind all of this. And I know Terry has a lot of people behind him uh, helping uh, to, to push for more dollars. So they can get more research because we need to find a cure. Terry, what's up? How are you? I'm doing well. I appreciate you guys playing. I appreciate you guys being here. Everybody at 104.5, 3HL, you guys have been supporting us for the whole 12 years we've been doing this. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, 3HL has been on the air since January of 2010. And I know that we've been involved uh, since day one. I, re I remember talking with you in our studio, in our radio station. And, and Clay Travis at the time had never heard of what you guys were doing. And, and he was moved like so many other people. and. And if you are, fightdmd.com is the website. But for those that don't know, what is Duchenne muscular dystrophy? Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a muscle wasting disease. So it affects all their muscles in their body. And uh, both of my boys, Jonah and Emery, were diagnosed at five and two. And so they were ambulatory at the time. And uh, we just noticed something was not right about Jonah running. He couldn't run and he had enlarged calf muscles. And so at five years old, we took him to uh, Old Harding Pediatrics and he was tested, and they said they want to test Emory the next day because they thought it was one form of muscular dystrophy. They just didn't know which. And so we found out it was Duchenne, and so Emory was tested the very next day, and he actually had it also. But it, it affects all of their muscles, and, of course, your heart's a muscle also. And so that's when we've been doing We started Fight DMD for cardiac research, and uh, so we've just recently, within the last couple of years, started our first trial. It's called the Fight DMD trial. Uh, our seed money was able to... Uh, get a million dollar grant at Vanderbilt. That's in addition to our million and a half. But so they've got their own wow. grant from our seed money. Yeah. And so we're, we've started a trial, and it's in eight locations around the country. So they're enrolling kids with Duchenne. It's only a Duchenne muscular dystrophy trial. Uh, so you just obviously everyone knows um, you have to have your heart. And so we're you, uh, seventy five percent of kids, you know, lose their life for heart failure. And mm -hmm. so we started our boys early at uh, four and five years old with on heart meds, and their heart is great. It's very healthy, so uh, you can't start soon enough. And so it just affects every muscle in their body. So when you um, got that diagnosis, um, what, what goes through your mind? And, and, and what led you to start this cause? Well, it's definitely a lot of disbelief. I remember sitting in a drive through at Wendy's after they said, go test Emory. And I was like, there's no way I have two kids that have this. Right. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And I'd never even heard of Duchenne and I'd done philanthropy work for MDA because my philanthropy in college was MDA. And I'd just done a, a lockup, an MDA lockup. And, I, but I'd never heard of Duchenne. So when they said that it was just disbelief. And so then we did another couple of fundraisers with MDA and I just didn't like that direction. I wanted to do more. You know, it's a huge organization. They do good work. But I thought we could do more, and, I, and they they focus on multiple dystrophies. And so I only wanted to focus on Duchenne. And so then that's when I started Fight DMD. We had our first golf tournament out here. And I heard you say earlier, I can't imagine how much of an obstacle it seems to have a, an, an amount of $500,000. And I thought, well, we're never going to raise that, but I'm going to start a foundation. And so we had our first golf tournament. Our first tournament raised fifty grand, And I thought, okay, well, there we go. We have hope. And so that's when we started other fundraising, fundraisers. And so we've done, we do a private event with the Titans. John Robinson and Mike Vrabel have been huge supporters of us. They've been great. Uh, so that's how we got there, but we couldn't do it alone. And we couldn't do it without your supporters and the radio listeners all around your listening area. And so it, you guys have been instrumental in us getting there. If events like this, when you see people come out and you got people donating, how much hope does that give you? You a know, lot. Finding the cure, yeah. Absolutely, because you know they're here for you. Right. And they're not here for me, but they're here for my boys and all boys with muscular dystrophy. And so when I first came here, we had no one that was playing right. that had muscular dystrophy. 
And I know last year you played, Brent played with a guy that his son was diagnosed. And today we had four different dads that was here playing that their sons have Duchenne. And so it, it definitely gives you hope that you know the county and the state and everyone in the U.S. and the world. We've had we've had donations from eight different countries. Wow. Uh, and so people, because our disease affects kids all over the world. Mm-hmm. So they hear about an organization and they want to help. Yeah. And so it it gives you extreme confidence that there's so much support around around this area. So you get this diagnosis, Terry, and you, you start to, you, you find out, like, how, how can we get something going? This, this, this thing is bigger than us. Um, how can we get to the point where we're helping anybody with Duchenne muscular dystrophy? And you find out you got to raise $500,000, as we mentioned, uh, to get a research grant going. When you eclipsed that number, what did that feel like? Uh, it, it was amazing. And, you know, you know what? You're not doing it for you, and you're doing it for kids, and you have parents reach out to you that want to help and want to know what can we do and can we raise money for you. But, it, you know, at the time, I just remember thinking, there's no way we're going to get there. And once you get there, and then you're, you're like, you know, then you start, once you get there, you want the next level. And you got to always be striving for the next level because as long as there is no cure, then you have to keep fighting. We're getting closer? I, I think we are. It's it's a there's, there's families that are have muscular dystrophy uh, organizations all over the country. There's a family that moved here probably six years ago. Their son was diagnosed with Duchenne. Within three years, they raised $350 million. As a, and they're investment bankers, and they're right. moving mountains. Yeah. And that's what it takes. Our research costs $10 million a year. So our million and a half is, is great for us, but it takes huge amounts of money for this research. There is a research trial going on. Can you can you tell us more about that? It, it's a trial. It's called it's it's a fetcher band. It's a drug for their heart, and so that's what they're they're trying to do. They're in, enrolling kids in the trial at uh, nine different locations. Vanderbilt being one of them, but nine different locations around the country, and so they're just doing the study to see is this trial is this drug going to work on their heart and to so the that it does not waste away and. So it's called scarring, but so their heart doesn't have scarring. Let me let me ask you something. Did Jonah always talk talk a little slick trash, subtle? He subtle does kind of talk some. He talk a little tra- trash to them every now and then, man, and I like that. <laughs> I like I like that part. But also, he comes back and builds builds it up. He ever tell you? Um, outside of that, man, I appreciate every, everything, Dad. You know, I, I really love what you're doing. He's understanding what's going on. Absolutely, because mm-hmm. they know that. Um, I mean, they're the face of the organization. That's they right. always have been. That's right. right. And uh, I thought we would have multiple faces, but uh, so far we haven't. But, yes, they they know that we have to keep fighting. And yeah. he told me just this year, I said, do you want to have the golf tournament this year? And he said, as long as there's no cure, we're having it. Yeah, it and is. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, that's big time. Jonah, real quick, gra- let, let Jonah. So are you a big Tennessee fan now that you've met Ron Slay? <laughs> well, if he makes me promise to be a fan, I'll try to keep my word. You'll try to keep your word? Okay. I, I think not, I can do that. Talk to him. Not too much. Are you, uh, you going to watch the Titans-Seahawks game this weekend? <laughs> do you think they can win this weekend? Well, I don't know. <laughs> A lot of people I had to look back. Okay. Well, hey, it, it's good to see you, buddy. Yeah, last game wasn't very good. Question, but it's good yeah. to see you and your brother. Um, we always enjoy coming out here. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I, you talked about hearts, man. No, I, I haven't met two kids with bigger and stronger hearts mm-hmm. than, than Jonah and Emery Marlin. Um, uh, they, they've just had a very severe, uh, very serious surgery a couple months ago. Emery was in November and Jonah's was just a couple months ago. And so they have scoliosis. So they put two titanium rods down their spine and oh. it was extremely painful. And they came through it with flying colors and they're both doing really well. But, um, they're, they definitely are an inspiration to me. Without question. Love you guys. You're an inspiration to a lot of people. Uh, FightDND.com. Go there now. Help. Uh, $5, $100,000, uh, anywhere in between. Mm-hmm. Ron said $0.30. Cents. Anything. It. FightDND.com. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at that Tennessee-Tennessee Tech matchup. We'll go to Knoxville. Our friend Josh Ward for WNML Radio will join us. Three things Tennessee needs to do to secure victory. That's next on 104.5 The Zone. 
It's a college football Saturday doubleheader. First kicking off at 11, it's the Falls hosting Tennessee Tech. Then at 6, Georgia clashes with South Carolina in an SEC Saturday night showdown. Coverage starts tomorrow morning at 9.30 on your home for the Falls and SEC football. 104.5 The Zone. Sports betting is legal in Tennessee. I love that. I love local companies. Action247.com. That is the website for you to get rolling as the NFL is here. It's time to get to betting with action 247.com. Tina Hodges, the CEO of Action 247, is here to talk about some great stuff they've got going on with the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. The Titans, we've got some specials going for all the NFL games. Bet $5, win $150 if there's a touchdown. So that seems like a pretty easy one. Everybody should win on that one. Um, we've also got some deposit matches for new customers. Anybody that makes their first deposit, we will match it up to $100 with the code ACTION400. So that's exciting this week. Thanks, Tina. I know I'm going to be all over the NFL. I want you to be all over the NFL, and let me know how you do, at Brent Doherty. Action247.com. Must be 21 years or older and present in Tennessee to bet. For gambling problems, support, call the Tennessee Red Line at 1-800-889-9789. In business, it's never just another day. Every day is the day. They could bring your biggest order yet or a new cyber threat. Whatever the day holds, with Comcast Business, you'll be prepared. With the network that can deliver gig speeds to the most businesses, Comcast Business Security Edge to help protect your connected devices and a dedicated team available 24-7. Every day in business is a big day. We'll keep you ready for what's next. Comcast Business. Powering possibilities. Get started with a fast and reliable internet and voice solution for $35 each a month for 24 months for two years when you buy both. Or... Ask about our best deal on a gig speed bundle with a $500 prepaid card. Call 1-800-501-6000 or go to comcastbusiness.com to learn more. Offer requires enrollment in paperless billing and auto pay through my account. Ends 9-19-21. Restrictions apply. New customers only with 35 megabits per second internet and one voice line. Early termination fee applies. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Hey, Nashville. USA Today Sports Plus is the new sports app that puts the fans first. While others are in the press conference, we're in the locker room with more reporters in more cities than any sports news outlet. Get the latest scores, stats, and standings and enjoy interactive experiences as well as group chats with our award-winning sports writers. If you're a fan of football, you need USA Today Sports Plus for this coming season. Download it from the Apple or Google Play stores to Today, USA Today Sports Plus, fan harder. Meet Patrick Peterson, owner of a Nashville coffee shop. Business was normal until a coffee critic called it the best specialty coffee in the country. It was time to scale up. So he turned to his American Express Blue Business Cash Card, which lets him earn 2% cash back on his business purchases for the first 50000 spent and 1% after that. Now Patrick has some new ideas brewing. Built for business by American Express. This story features a fictional character from a fictional business. Terms and cash back cap apply. Learn more at AmericanExpress.com slash Blue Business Cash. Don't do business without it. If you're over dealing with hair loss but think now's not the time to do something about it, you couldn't be more wrong. Now is the time to face it head on, and the expert staff of PAI Medical is ready to serve you. Not only is PAI on the cutting edge with the latest technology, but they have awesome financing options making it affordable for anyone. Have your procedure and recover while you're still working from home. Call 615-376-6010 or go to WeGrowHair.com. All they do is hair, and they are the very best at it. Visit WeGrowHair.com today. It's that time of year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron. BetOnline.net is your number one spot for all the pro and college football odds and news this season. Get all the updated info on players, teams, and odds to help you with your new football contests, leagues, and new survivor pools. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports, pro sports, MMA, championship boxing, Boxing, golf, horse racing, they have it all. Bring the game home with BetOnline.net, your online sports experts. If you know your HVAC system is in need of replacement, now's the time to upgrade. Hiller wants to buy your old system. During the month of September, you'll earn a credit of up to $1,500 on select new HVAC systems when you trade in your old unit. Or upgrade to a new tankless water heater and we'll give you $500 for your old equipment. Don't wait until your system fails. Visit HappyHiller.com today. Happy you'll be or the service is free. Call the Happy Face Truck today. 
Hey folks, this is Paul Winkler. I've been coaching investors for over 30 years. You may have heard me talk about research about how low investor returns have been versus the markets over the past three decades. Ever wonder why? Well, it's easy. Investors and advisors lose discipline at the worst times, and it's typically when the world seems to be in chaos. Think about the things that people thought would destroy their retirement over the past several years. Y2K, global cooling, global warming, oil running out, stagflation, government spending, Clintonomics, Reaganomics, Obama, terrorism, the dollar crashing. It's always something, and markets do go up and down, so it just adds to the fear. Here's the point. There are always people out there that are telling you that the world is about to end. And they're really good at convincing you that it truly is different now. Realize that they typically have a lot to gain by you listening to them and acting on what they're saying. If you're tired of being whipsawed and want to learn to gain a sense of confidence when it comes to investing, call us for a free initial consultation, 615-851-1950, or set something up online at paulwinkler.com. From the Mark Spain Real Estate Traffic Center. I-65 northbound seeing a lot of delays and a lot of traffic this afternoon with traffic backed up all the way into Millersville from downtown. I-65 southbound also seeing a lot of traffic not quite as bad going all the way down almost into Brentwood and I-24 going into Murfreesboro all seeing some traffic as well. I-24 eastbound between Wilma Rudolph Boulevard and Rossview Road that accident still blocking the right shoulder there as well as the one on I-65 northbound at Rosa Parks Boulevard. I'm Big Shoe Stu and that's traffic on your home for Titans football 1045 The Zone. I'm a covered with grease from my head to my feet. My hands are cut and callous. I spent all my bucks on a broke down track. Great, tell 1045 is home. we got to get the latest in Knoxville again. Our buddy Josh Ward joins us to talk about Tennessee each Friday. What does Tennessee need to do? Three things Tennessee needs to do to give itself its best chance to win. And Josh, they're favored by 41. So, they, I mean, number one, they better win. <laughs> Yeah, uh, being present should be where this conversation starts. If they are at Neyland Stadium for kickoff, they can even be late maybe and just take some of the penalties that come with being uh, a little tardy and still win the game against Tennessee Tech, I would think. <laughs> yeah, and, and I know you're going to get to some of this, but I, I know a lot of people are, are more in t- intent on watching what they look like as opposed to yeah. what the final score is. Yeah, this is uh, a work on yourself week. You're coming off a loss, so that affects the conversation quarterback as you uh, guys have probably gathered over the last few days has been a talking point in Knoxville so quarterback play offensive line personnel like what does the group look like that's one of the questions I think uh, going in so yeah fix yourself especially with Florida week to follow the conversation has not been about Tennessee Tech it's been about the game getting ready for the next game what is thing number one that Tennessee needs to do Saturday Josh uh, I would say clean it up. Too many penalties, uh, mistakes that are made. You don't want to turn the ball over, of course. So clean that up. If Tennessee looks like a more disciplined team, if Tennessee looks like a team that's maybe prepared better coming in, because I think that was a frustration of Josh Heupel. I, I don't know exactly why, but if he's talking about the build up to the game and then you see all these penalties, and by the way, that was an issue at UCF the last couple of years, Tennessee or UCF committing too many penalties. Then you see that in the first real game for Tennessee against Pitt. You don't want to see that moving forward because it, it can cost you an opportunity at Florida. It can keep you from winning those swing games against Missouri, which by the way, follows Florida, Kentucky, those games that we talked about all summer. If, if you make less mistakes, General Nealon said to make less mistakes, you have a better chance to win. <laughs> I think that's spot on. What's the number two, Josh? Uh, I would say get a big halftime lead. And I say that because that probably means you've done well in the first quarter and the second quarter. The second quarter has been a major problem for the Vols. It it was against Bowling Green. They couldn't do anything offensively. And then the second quarter uh, against Pitt is when the Panthers started to come back and then take the lead. 33 to uh, to 10, the the difference there in the two quarters, uh, the two second quarters against Bowling Green and Pitt. So if you have a big lead at halftime, you've probably cleaned some things up. You've taken care of business and you've not had a bad quarter, there's no reason to have one against Tennessee Tech. What's the third thing, Josh? Empty the sideline. Get mm. all those guys out there. Uh, get, I, don't, I don't know exactly what the quarterback availability is or what the rotation would be in terms of getting them on the field, but get them out there on the field. Get some of those guys that maybe you're not ready to count on against Florida, but what if you deal with some injury issues as the season goes along? You get to November, and you're looking for players who maybe will have developed 
Well, get them in the game against Tennessee Tech. Get some real game reps before you get into SEC play. If you do what you're supposed to in this game and you have a bunch of points in the first half and you have a big lead and there's no doubt what's going to happen in the third and fourth quarters, you can play a lot of guys. They can make some mistakes, but they'll learn from those mistakes on film and they'll maybe be ready to play later on in the season. So who would you start at quarterback, Josh, and who do you think starts at quarterback? Uh, I would start Hendon Hooker. I would get him ready for Florida because he's played in some big games. He has experience. He's had some success. And I, I like what he can do. He's the guy that I lean toward in the summer. And obviously, Tennessee staff went a different direction. I think it's closer than maybe a lot of people have wanted to make it out to be this week. I'm a little surprised how quickly – some fans have turned on Joe Milton, but I would go with Hendon Hooker. I don't think the staff is giving up on Milton at all, uh, yeah. but with Hooker's experience, he did some good things last week. Not He wasn't perfect by any means, but I would be getting him ready to be the starter against Florida. I think his running ability in this offense is really important. I think the staff recognizes that while they're trying to get the offensive line sorted out. So I would get Hooker ready, and I would not give up on Joe Milton. Have you been surprised at, at Tennessee's ability to, to kind of shut down the run against any opponent? I mean, like, we, we, we've seen the inability to stop the run against any opponent for years now. Yeah. I, I've been impressed by that part of what the defense is putting out there. Yeah, really impressed. I think that is one of the biggest positives to start. Uh, last week, I thought Pitt would try to run, and Pitt tried and had no success. So credit to those guys up front. Matthew Butler has been one of the leaders. He said before the season, I can't wait to show what kind of progress and improvement we've made up front. And so far, that is there. They will be tested again. Florida's going to try to run. SEC teams are going to try to run. And, and some of them will probably have success. But I thought Pitt would be better running the football last week. It wasn't there. The pass rush needs to improve. Getting Byron Young helps. Uh, this will be his first game playing for Tennessee. And uh, we played this game before where we hear about a guy and then Maybe it doesn't work out, but behind the scenes, they really like what they have, and you need more personnel. So maybe they can get better pass rush with Byron Young and Tyler Barron, who I think has been one of the bright spots so far, too. Hey, and you talk about a guy that we were all raving about getting back, and we, we saw a little glimpse of him, and he went for six. That's Jimmy Callaway. I uh, think he has yeah. a bigger role going forward. Yeah, I think so. Uh, this is a guy that we've heard the staff praise with his ability. He's a part of the group where we've said, okay, He's got some potential. Let's see what he can do. Well, pretty good start, right? Not being out there mm -hmm. for the first game, and then you need a play, and he makes somebody miss. What? Go back and watch that play. It makes the defender look silly. Like he doesn't. He, he ends up hitting a pit uh, player, not Jimmy Callaway. So they need more of that. They need more playmaking. And you know, we, we saw Tennessee taking shots down the field. It wasn't working, and I know that's really frustrating. But if you have guys that can make players miss and hit a home run that way. This offense, I think, can create those opportunities as well. So they need more progress there. I think the tight end involvement is a positive because that's now something that opposing defenses have to think about. But if they get Jalen Hyatt back, I, I think he'll be fine. He can still be a playmaker in this offense despite some early drops. Jimmy Callaway is a guy that this staff likes, and we saw why. Good stuff, Josh. I appreciate you, man. We'll talk with you next week about the Florida Gators. You got it. Good to see you guys. All right, there he is, Josh. Josh Ward, at Josh underscore Ward, WNML Radio. When we come back. We've got headlines for you. We'll get you reset here for the 5 o'clock hour of 3HL. Friday edition, Brent Doherty, Ron Slay with you. Don Davenport in Memphis. She'll rejoin on Monday, and we'll talk about what happened in all these games we're talking about today. That's next, 3HL, 104.5 The Zone. Jay Martin Ramon, still saying it how we want to. Clemson's quarterback and trying to figure out how to pronounce it. I've looked it up. So it's T-A-I-S-U-N. That's pronounced Tyson. And P H O M M A C H A N H. So it's Tyson Pumachon. Really? T P. Tyson hey. Pumachon. All of that just to say Pumachon? Yep. Pumate. Tyson Pumachon. Booty Tang. Monday morning from 6 to 10 on 104.5 The Zone. Got the Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to get this weekend to get that next new vehicle car, truck, SUV, or Jeep. Maybe you've been thinking about it for a while. Maybe you've been going dealership to dealership. This is the weekend to get it done. And you'll get it done if you go see my friends at Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Springfield, Tennessee, 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. Take 24 West to exit 35. Best car buying experience you'll ever have. I've bought multiple vehicles from these guys. They are awesome, awesome people. And here's the thing. There will be no pressure at all. They're going to get you in the right vehicle. That's it. The right vehicle for you. So go take your test drive. Ask your questions. They'll have your answers. You go inside. They'll help make the numbers work. It'll be that easy. Check them out online, guptonmotors.com. All of the dealership information is there. The inventory is there as well. 
guptonmotors.com, the website. Go check out Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram this weekend. Get it done and tell them Brent sent you. This is Tiki Barber with a CBS Sports Minute. The best reality TV has always been and always will be live sport. There's no script on what's going to happen, whether it's the cliche joy of victory or agony of defeat. We see the emotion as it happens, which is why the NFL's decision to move their episodic behind-the-scenes show, Hard Knocks, to...
Grove Boulevard and Rossview Road. That accident blocking the right shoulder there. The right shoulder also blocked on I-65 northbound at Rosa Parks Boulevard, as well as Elm Hill Pike west of Arlington Avenue. This report is sponsored by the Tennessee Lottery. The Powerball jackpot is now up to $432 million. Plus, choose the double play add-on for a second chance to win up to $10 million. Hurry into Tennessee and hurry into any Tennessee Lottery retailer and play today for your chance to win big. Next drawing is tonight. That's traffic on your home for Titans football, 104.5 The Zone. From the WinBet studio, win with WinBet. WTFX Gallatin, Nashville. The Titans and the Seahawks. Kickoff is Sunday afternoon at 325 on your home for Titans football. Trending now at 104.5 The Zone. Good evening. I am Joe Honk, and the Titans are about to make their way to Seattle, and they will be doing so without Caleb Farley. It was announced a little while ago that he is officially out against the Seattle Seahawks. Also, Austin P made the announcement earlier today that after 59 years in the OVC, they will be joining the A-Sun and which will now be a rivalry with Lipscomb. The program is going to be joining that at the end of this school year. So July 1, 2022. And high school football tonight on 104.5 The Zone. It's the Battle of the Woods. Brentwood versus Ravenwood. Pre-game is going to start at 6.30. Kickoff at 7 p.m. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once. On your home for the Vols, the flagship station of the Tennessee Titans, and home to 3HL, this is 104.5 The Zone. The 3HL with Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, and Ron Slay. Great job, 104.5 The Zone, Brent Doherty, Ron Slay. What up, Ron? Man, I'm in the building, I'm in the building. It's Friday, man. I'm in the building. We got a lot of football going on this weekend. I'm in the building. Florida and Alabama. Florida and Alabama in Gainesville. And Swiss on. And what? Swiss on. <laughs> Swiss on. <laughs> and a Stiz on. Yeah. For the Crimson Tide. Yep. Gator Mike made a big case for the Florida Gators, not only covering, but winning. I wrote it down. 31 to 27 is what he called. He don't want he no said? points either. Now, he said if I were you, I would take the uh, points yeah, if you're yeah. going to bet Florida. But he but don't want none. He don't want it. Yeah, he wants just mano y mano. Peter Burns from the SEC Network told us the most interesting game is Auburn at Penn, Penn State. State. Yep. Yep. I'm looking forward to that, too. 6.30 kick time. Yep. Well, who's going to show up? White the out? real Bo Nix or the other Bo Nix? Question. I don't know. Let's, I mean, we're going to have fun. And then you got Titans at Seahawks. you got a full bank of NFL games. But can the Titans bounce, bounce back? And right. can they look better? Like, can they... Can they look like they're even interested in being there? Because that's, right. that's, that's what it looked like on Sunday. They didn't even look like they were even into being there. No, without question. So come out, hit them in the mouth. Don't just get hit in the mouth and not respond. This time, respond. Yeah. Yeah. And then hopefully, do the hitting first, especially in Seattle, because there's a lot of people up there to hit. They got a 12th man you got to hit also. John Davenport's going to join us in the 520 segment, talk a lot about some of these college football games in the NFL and all that. Then we're going to call our shot, thanks to Daddy Rack, Tennessee Straight Whiskey, mm-hmm. in the final segment of today's show right uh, but we want to thank terry marlin and his family for having us out here again all shows from the zone were here broadcasting live in dixon at graystone golf course and this golf course i told you before have you ever played this before? no i haven't this yeah. is my first time here i always this, heard about it this is unlike any golf course you'll find in middle tennessee yeah it's so much fun it is fun and i had fun driving the car <laughs> yes you yes you did a lot of fun we should have had a camera next time we got to get a camera in the car so it can record us. You said I was always finding the tough way to places, and I didn't even notice that I was doing that. <laughs> Dude, it'll be level ground right to the left of us, and then a steep hill right to the right of us, and you'll go right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm and, looking. I'm looking for things to be harder than they need to be. I saw that, <laughs> and then and then told me just hold on. Here we go, Jim. Here we go, Jim. <laughs> Don't hey. That play, hey. Like that plays so much in my head today. Here we go, Jim. I'm like over and over. over and what over. I hate is now when my wife does something and she's like, all right, we're going to do this. I'm like, here we go, Jim. That's all I think now. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Mark uh, Mariani made his pick. Great pick. Yeah, he went, uh, where'd he go? He uh, went Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't want the points. They give away the Yep. They're giving away money, baby. Smell it. Money line winner. Listen, man, if you want, if you're into the gambling scene at all, listen to 3HL. Yeah, I mean, we got you covered every day. <laughs> Come on, man. And we're going to talk about it every day. Here's the other thing, too. Like, 
I know a lot of people that don't bet on sports that like to hear the the information that's coming in because I I think it gives you a good uh, like if you, if you hear that ninety percent of the money is going on the Gators yeah at fourteen and a half I think that gives you a good little side note going yep. into that game yep. um, so little things like that you'll find mm-hmm. here on three HL again twelfth annual golf for a cure at Greystone Golf Club today fightdmd.com is the website go there it's a nonprofit or- organization that was founded by Terry Marlin in two thousand nine. And uh, we love coming up here to see Jonah and Emery. And uh, both of those kids Without were question. diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Duch- <laughs> Jonah, Jonah came over here <laughs> during the break and he said, how'd you play, Slay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, it was kind of like he was waiting for the answer. Yeah. And, and I, you said you putted well. Yeah. He said, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> he said, he said are you a beginner? Yeah. I said, yeah, and he said, more like a rookie. Yeah. So I said, uh, well, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, so Jonah and Emery went to Top Golf, and mm-hmm. they were able to hit golf balls there yep. uh, from their chairs and and uh, had a great time. Uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, 100% fatal, no cu- current cure. That's why we're here. Mm-hmm. We need a cure. Got to. And uh, so a lot of money going toward research. Thanks to a lot of you guys, and uh, they definitely appreciate that. Anything you can give to help is great. Fight DMD. Dot com. So, Titan Seahawks. There's so many things about the Seahawks that I'm worried about from a Titan perspective. And then Todd Furman comes on here Wednesday and says, Titans are live, live dogs. <laughs> Meaning, he likes them to win. Yeah. <laughs> um, exactly. Which kind of blew me away. But that's what you find sometimes in, in matchups like these where it's the beauty of the NFL, beauty of sports, where you think you've got something figured out and then the opposite thing happens. Yeah. Especially in the NFL. All you see that time. all the time because yep. it's such a grind in that league. Um, and, and listen, Seattle played well against Indianapolis last week, and Russell looked completely comfortable. Yes, he did. In that new system. And you got yep. Tyler Lockett that can, I mean, Hunk will tell you, he'll, he'll take a, <laughs> an 80 yard out route to you. <laughs> take it to the house. Shut up, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts, man. It but is. DK is huge. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so many concerns, right? And, yep. and based on how the Titans play. Now, I mean, this is kind of a challenger manhood game. Like, are you going to put that same product on tape again? Mm-hmm. Or are you going to fight? Right. You get hit in the face, you're going you, you gonna to turn and run, or yep. you're going to fight? No, you better swing from the shoulder. Let them have it. Big Jeff. I'm, I'm expecting them to anchor it. And what we can't forget about is they got a big guy, Chris Carson, man, that's coming downhill. So stop him from going downhill. Let's get Derrick Henry going downhill. See, and nobody's talking about Chris Carson. No, they I'm aren't. glad you brought him up. No, they are not. Yep. Big time. But you think the Titans <laughs> win. Yes. I am picking the Titans. Why are you laughing? Because the way I was looking at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm picking the Titans, man. I got the Titans, man. I think they bounce back. Cuzzo Mike came on and said, man, when the back is against the wall, that's when they rise up. Here it is, man. What better time to rise up than against the 12th man? Let it roll. Let it roll. We're going to roll, and uh, we'll bring Don Davenport into the mix next. Stay tuned. 3HL, 104.5 The Zone. The Titans and Seahawks go at it in the first road game of the season. Coverage with Buck Rising on the Lee Company Countdown to Kickoff. Starts Sunday at noon. Then the Titans and Seahawks kick it off at 325. On your home for Titans football, 104.5 The Zone. Want to talk about a new mobile brake repair service? I'm really excited about these guys. Met with them uh, a couple of months ago and thought, man, this is a great idea. Anything that could save me time, save you time, that's a great idea. New Brakes, mobile brake repair is going to save you time. New Brakes, that's nubrakes.com. They will send a full time certified brake tech to your home office or wherever you are to fix your brakes on the spot. You don't have to go anywhere, they will come to you. The best part is they only work on brakes, so you're never going to be upsold on auto repairs that you do not need. New Brakes only uses premium brake parts, warranties all of their work, and provides an unmatched level of customer service. It's convenient, affordable. They're backed by thousands of five-star reviews. Simply head to newbrakes.com. That's nubrakes.com to request a quote. Choose your repair date, and then they will come to fix your brakes. Make sure you tell them you're a zone listener. You'll get a 10% discount. It's newbrakes.com. That's nubrakes.com. So one of the biggest games this Sunday, Kansas City, Baltimore. FanDuel Sportsbook is about to make it even bigger for you because FanDuel is giving new customers 30 to 1 odds on either team to win. So that means you can end the weekend right by winning $150 on a 5 
dollar bet. Kansas City, Baltimore, Mahomes, Jackson. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe uh, put in a same game parlay there too. Money line spread. Touchdown score, who's going to score the most, all of that. FanDuel is sports betting made simple, and they are always hooking you up with great offers. They're the number one rated sports book app in America. It's super easy to use. I'm looking at it on my phone right now as I speak. Safe and secure, fast payouts within 24 hours. All of those are reasons why everybody is using FanDuel Sportsbook. Sign up with promo code DAWN, D-A-W-N, this Sunday before Baltimore and Kansas City, and you could win $150 on a $5 bet. You must be 21 and older and present in Tennessee. New users only. $10 first deposit required. Must wager and designated offer market. Max bonus $150. Bonus for Tennessee users. Fulfilled in site credit within 72 hours. Tennessee site credit expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Tennessee Redline. 1-800-889-9789. What up, people? You know who it is. It's Ron Slay. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. When you hear that, you're trying to figure out what building I'm in. Y'all know I'm serious when it comes to food, especially some wings. So you know I'm serious when I tell you that Strike Out Wings is your lunch and game day destination. Catch all the NFL games with the NFL Sunday ticket and check out their daily specials. On Tuesdays, you can go in there and get 69-cent wings. You heard it from me. 69-cent wings every Tuesday. Don't get much better than that. Strike Out Wings is much more than just wings. How about you can get the tenders, you can get the catfish, you can get them fries with the ranch on it with the Cajun seasoning with a little bit of cheese sprinkled on top. <laughs> I can't lead you wrong, man. I can't lead you wrong. And then you get to wash it down with that Kool-Aid that they make fresh every single day. Listen now, two locations, 2521 Nolensville Pike right off 440, or you can go to 123 Ewing Drive right where the old Prince's uh, location used to be. I'm telling you what's real. Go to one, two. Three, steer I got wings. I'm gone. Hey, it's Ramon Foster. Guys, have you noticed a lack of energy, motivation, and drive?